All right. So we're going to review chapter five page. Then we're going to read chapter six. We're going to do our compare and contrast worksheet. And then we'll go over your homework for this time. So let's take a look at chapter five. Your word you should have defined was, Lily? Competition. Competition. For the definition, you should have written, Zane? Rivalry in the marketplace. Rivalry in the marketplace. Yep, but it wasn't a super long definition that time. From which character's perspective? We know it was Zach. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, this chapter is Evans. It was a little bit more on Evans. Did it have a little bit on Jesse? Yeah. It, it most of it was Evans this time. Good. It didn't really show Jesse's thinking as much. Nope. All right. Using context clues, what do you think the word miser means? Remember, miser was on page 63. So find page 63 for me in your books, fourth grade friends. 63. 63. Remember, Evan was saying, you'd lock it up in your lockbox and save it till you were 50 years old. You're the biggest miser on the planet. What did we kind of think that that could mean? Micah? It's specifically with money. It's not just being a hoarder, friends. It's hoarding money. You're keeping it to yourself. You're kind of stingy. Can you think of a character from a Christmas movie that is a miser? Mr. Krabs. Uh, Peter. Uh, Scrooge. Scrooge is yes, a miser. Scrooge, Scrooge from a biggest Christmas Carol. He's like, one of the biggest misers. Mr. Krabs. Nathan had his hand raised so quietly. All right, Scrooge, if you've read a Christmas Carol or seen the Christmas Carol movies, uh, Scrooge oh, wow. is uh, a big miser. Mr. Right. Number four, do you think that Evan and Jesse did the right thing by telling their mom they were joking around instead of arguing? What do you think? Levi, what do you think? No, no? why do you think that that was the wrong thing to do? You're right. It's not a good idea to keep things from your parents. Does anyone think something else? Uh, maybe a different reason or you disagree? What are you thinking, Ryan? Um, I think they did the right thing, maybe because they didn't want to So Ryan thinks they did the right thing to make mom's life a little easier so that she doesn't have to get more distracted from work. Nathan? Um, no, no, because it's still lying, right? Kind of like Levi's. She doesn't lie to parents. Lying's bad. What about you, Rosie? It just makes you feel bad. Like, it just, like, it up the so you think they did the right thing or the wrong thing? They did the wrong thing because it kind of starts to eat away that. Oh, do you know what that's called when you feel that be uneasy? Guilt. That guilt. God. Let's do Brooke. Um, I think that uh, I think that sometimes you can't decide to get a Yeah, they said we're not going to do that. It makes her sad. Why does it make her sad? Do you remember? Why does the fighting make her so sad? Do you remember, Amelia? I mean, she just wants to be a good parent, and her dad loves her, and it's all like, she it's all on her. mom. Yeah, it's all on mom now, right? Dad's like, yeah, left. Yeah, left. So it makes her sad. Yeah, and then she wants to be a good parent, and her dad loves her, and it's all like, she's all on mom. Yeah, it's all on mom now, right? Dad left. So it makes her sad if they're fighting. Maybe. Some milk. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it does remind her of fighting with dad. All right, let's go on to your predictions. Who is going to win, Evan or Jesse? Raise your hand if you think Evan. <laughs> Nobody thinks Evan? No. Thomas, you're kind of in between. What yeah. You think Evan, maybe? Maybe, but I'm more towards Jesse. All right, raise your hand if you think Jesse's going to win. No, no. Everybody no. in class I thinks Jesse's going to win. Gonna you think a tie, Camille? Yeah, why a tie? Like Camille, Camille, why a tie? Because they're both the main characters. Good things happen to the main characters at the end of the Ooh, generally good things happen to main characters, and they're both main. 
All right. But what if they don't have a tie? It can't. Let's say uh, that there's a loophole. It can't be a tie. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win, Claire? I think Jessie because she already makes so much money, and her stand is also really nice. Yeah, Jessie is very good at business, right? She knows what the stand needs. She knows how to get customers. She's really good at this. But she can't talk dumb. She's not as good a talker, though, as Evan. Ooh. Megan might be. What do you think, Kizzy? What do you think? I think Jesse's going to win because usually the cuter get, get more of the attention. Evan's not. Evan's cute. What are you talking about? We don't know his personality. We do know his personality. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's go on. I know that there's more reasons, friends. We got a long chapter today, though. Do you think the events match that vocabulary word of competition? Give me a thumbs up if you think, yes, that the events do match. All right, Monica, why are you thinking yes? I think it relates because they make like a bet is like kind of challenge each other. They kind of challenge each other. Are they working in the same kind of market? No. Yeah. Yes. They are. What's their market? Lemonade. Lemonade or the, what's their area? The neighborhood, right? The sidewalk. They're working in that same space. Does anyone think that they don't match? The events do not match. All right, good to go then. Flip in your packet till you see the back side of chapter six. The, ooh, do you remember what we call these circles? Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams. What do Venn diagrams help us do, fourth grade friends? Compare and contrast. All right. Then we're going to read chapter six is a little bit long, okay, friends? It's 20 pages of awesomeness. <laughs> chapter six starts on page 67. You need to find your book today. That's what you're working on during this time. Okay. Underselling. What type of speech is underselling? What type of speech is it? Take a look at the page. What do you notice after underselling? Amelia? Not a vowel. Verb. Oh, verb. 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 Good. A verb. You could undersell, Camille. Do you want to undersell? Yes. No. Let's yes. see what the definition is. Pricing the same goods for less than the competition. Yes. That's good. Why would that be good, Monica? Because then people are going to go to the less expensive ones so they can also get more, but then... A lot of people are going to be going there, so you're going to need to add up to the same amount, and then people with a um, like higher might not. Yeah. So if it's less expensive, do people want to go there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't have to spend as much. And if they don't have to spend as much on one cup of lemonade, what might they be willing to do? By two, By two or three. Ooh. Who do you think is going to undersell? Evan. 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 All right, let's read and find out. Jesse knew that Evan was up to something. First of all, there were all those phone calls last night, at least 10 of them. Then he'd come knocking on her door this morning, asking if he could have the pieces of phone cord she had leaning against her bedroom wall. No way, she'd answered. That's for my Labor Day display. Oh, give it up. Today's Thursday. The contest is on Monday, and you don't even have an idea, Evan said. I do, too, have an idea. I'm just not telling you. Jessie still didn't have a clue about her Labor Day project, but she wasn't going to give Evan the satisfaction of knowing that. Uh, then how come you haven't done anything, Evan said, pointing at the blank foam core and the bags of untouched art supplies. You're supposed to have pictures and typed up information and a big title. It's supposed to be like a school report. Jessie scrunched her eyes and pursed her lips in a you're such an idiot look. Don't worry. It's just going to be great. And it's going to win first prize. And anyway, mom bought all those supplies for me. And I'm not giving anything to you. Jessie heard Evan mutter, miser. Just as she slammed the door in his face. <laughs> yeah. And now, three of Evan's friends were over. Paul, Jack, and Ryan. 
And all three had shown up with paper bags. And they were all in the garage making a lot of noise with a big keep out sign taped to the door. Not that Jesse would have gone in there anyway. Who cares what a bunch of boys are doing? But she wished Megan had invited her to come over before lunch instead of after. Jesse went into the kitchen to make a turkey sandwich. The boys had left a slimy mess of peanut butter, Doritos, and yes, sticky puddles of lemonade mix. Jesse quickly looked in the trash can under the kitchen sink. There were 12 empty cans of frozen lemonade mix. 12! That was 96 cups worth of lemonade! 96 possible sales! Holy cow! Where did Evan, where had Evan gotten the lemonade? He hadn't gone to the store, and he didn't have any money anyway. Then, Jesse remembered the paper bags that Paul, Ryan, and Jack had carried in. She bet the boys had all raided their freezers and brought over a stash. That didn't seem fair. She and Megan had to buy the lemonade today using the money they'd made yesterday. How were they going to stay ahead of the game if the boys had free lemonade to sell? Think, Jesse, think, she whispered to herself. She couldn't let those boys win. By the time she finished her lunch and cleaned up her mess, she wasn't going to lift a finger to clean up the boys' mess. She had the beginning of a plan in her head, which is why she found it doubly confusing when she knocked on Megan's screen and Carly Brownell came to the door. Jesse, the been there all ready to say, I've got a great idea. But then there was Carly looking down at her like she was an earwig. Um, is Megan home? Asked Jesse. Carly didn't open the screen as she looked left and right behind Jesse. Where's Evan? Huh? Said Jesse. Megan came running down the stairs carrying bottles of nail polish. Oh, hi, Jesse, she said, opening the door. She poked her head out and looked around. Where's Evan? He's at home. Why? Asked Jesse. Carly made a noise like a snorting hippopotamus. I thought you said he was coming, said Megan. No, I didn't, said Jesse. You said it would be fun to make a lemonade stand with all three of us, and I said, yeah, that would be fun. So didn't he want to? Asked Megan. I never asked him, said Jesse. Oh, I thought you were going to, said Megan. Then you should have said, hey, Jesse, ask Evan if he wants to have a lemonade stand tomorrow. And I would have asked him. This was exactly what drove Jesse crazy about girls. They always said things halfway and then expected you to get the other half. And Jesse never got the other half. Carly gave Megan a look. Jesse wasn't positive what that look meant, but she was pretty sure it wasn't a nice one. That was the other thing that Jesse hated about girls. They were always giving looks, looks that contained all kinds of strange and complicated messages. Last year, in second grade, there had been four girls who were always exchanging looks with one another. Becky Baker, Lorelai Sun, Andrea Hennessy, and Eileen Garrett. Jesse watched them and knew that Evan was right. They talked without words. They used their eyes to pass secret messages. She also knew that they didn't like her, but only because Evan had finally explained it to her over Christmas vacation. Fourth grade friends, you should be following along in the book, not just having your book open. Thank you. Uh, Jesse was surprised when he told her this. They laughed so much. How could they be so mean? They were the four who started the club, the Wild Hot Jelly Beans Club or as they called it, the WHJ Club. Becky was president, and she was always telling the others what to do. They made signs and paper buttons and membership cards. The teacher, Mrs. Soren, didn't usually allow clubs in the classroom, but she made an exception, telling the girls, I'll let you wear your buttons in class, but only if you let all the other kids join, if they want to. By the end of the day, every kid in class was wearing a WHJ button, even Jesse, who'd never belonged to a club before. It had seemed like Becky was being so nice to her. That should have been your first clue, Evan told Jesse later. Becky made extra buttons for Jesse and even helped tape them all over her shirt. And she made a special membership card for her 
and even a WHJ sign that she helped Jessie glue onto her writer's workshop folder. Jessie remembered all the girls laughing, and Jessie laughing too. And all those strange looks that Becky and Lorelai and Andrea and Eileen kept flashing back and forth, like secret notes passed in class that Jessie could never read. The very next day, Mrs. Soren collected all the buttons, gathered up all the membership cards, and even replaced Jessie's writer's workshop folder. No clubs in the classroom, she said. I made a bad choice by allowing it, even for one day. On the playground, Jessie went up to Becky. Why is she breaking up the club? She asked. Becky gave her a sour look. She'd been grumpy all morning. You don't get it, you dummy. WHJ doesn't stand for wild hot jelly beans. We just said that to Mrs. Soren. To Mrs. Soren, Soren. It stands for We Hate Jesse. It's the We Hate Jesse Club, and everyone in the class is a member. Jesse stared at Becky. Why did they hate her? What had she ever done to them? It didn't make sense. And then Lorelai, Andrea, and Eileen had laughed. And even Becky had managed a smirky grin. Jerks, Evan said later when Jesse told him the whole story. They've got rocks for brains. But Jess, you gotta be on the lookout for girls like that. Standing in Megan's front hall, Jesse stared at Carly. Something inside her told her Carly was a girl like that. Look, said Jesse, it doesn't matter. Evan can't come over. He's busy. And to, we've got to, to get going on our lemonade stand. I've got a great idea. We don't want to do a lemonade stand, said Carly. Jesse looked at Megan. It's just that Megan fiddled with the bottles and nail polish in her hand the same way she fiddled with her band bracelets the day before. It's kind of hot, and we did the lemonade thing already, and now Carly is over, so, you know... You said you wanted to, said Jessie, and I thought you liked me, she added in her head. She felt her lower lip tremble. Not now, she shouted inside. Don't you be a big baby. Megan stood there saying nothing, fiddling with the bottles. Then she turned to Carly. Oh, come on, Carly, it will be fun. We made a ton of money yesterday, and it was really fun. Carly crossed her arms tightened her lips, and raised one eyebrow. It was amazing how high she could raise that eyebrow. Jessie had never seen an eyebrow go that high. Oh, come on, Carly, Megan said again. Carly didn't move a muscle. Well, then I guess... Megan's voice trailed off. She clicked up one bottle of nail polish against the other, so it made a tapping sound that filled the long silence. I guess me and Jessie will do the lemonade stand alone then. Carly dropped her eyebrow in her arms. Whatever, she said as she walked out the door. Spend the day babysitting if you want. The screen door slammed, followed by a huge bucket full of silence. Whatever, said Megan, imitating Carly's voice. Jessie laughed, even though she was still steaming from the babysitting remark. Thanks for doing the lemonade stand with me, she said. Are you kidding, said Megan. She's such a stuck-up jerk. I didn't even invite her over. She just rode by, and when I said that you and Evan might be coming over, she just walked into the house. Are all the girls in fourth grade like that? asked Jessie, trying to sound casual. Some are. Some aren't, said Megan. She sat down on the stairs and opened a bottle of sky-blue nail polish. With quick, expert strokes, she started painting her toenails. Hey, that's right. You're going to be in our class this year. That's so weird. Jumping a grade. A lot of people skip a grade, said Jessie. Really? I never met one before. Here, do your toes green, and then we'll be coordinated. What are you, coordinated? Yeah. Uh, well, she does hers blue and hers green. They'd be kind of kind of matching. Yeah, coordinated. They'd be pairing up. Jessie ended up getting more polish on her toes than on her toenail. But by the time they were done, Jessie had explained her plan for the day. Value added. See, she said, pulling 10 bright ideas to light up your sails from the back pocket of her shorts. Do you remember where that's from? Her mom wrote it. Good. 
She turned to bright idea number two and pointed with her finger. Value added. Something extra, such as a special feature or attractive packaging, added by a company to a product that makes the product more desirable in the marketplace. That means we give customers something extra they didn't expect, explained Jessie. I mean, anyone can go home and mix up their own batch of lemonade, right? So if we want them to buy from us, we've got to give them something extra. We add value. Great, said Megan. What are we going to add? Well, how about chips? It may be pretzels. Everyone likes chips and pretzels. We'll just have a bowl on the table and anyone who buys lemonade can have some free snacks. So we're adding value. Snacks. Yeah, except Jessie had stayed up late last night reading her mom's booklet. You know what we're really adding? Fun. That's the one thing people can't get all by themselves. It looks like we're selling lemonade and snacks, but we're really selling fun and everyone wants fun. Wow, said Megan, that's really smart. It'll be like a party. Who doesn't like a party? Jessie nodded her head. She carefully tore out the definition of value added from the booklet and put it in her lockbox. Her mother always said, some ideas are like money in the bank. An hour later, they were all set up. The lemonade stand was newly decorated with streamers and balloons. Three bowls of snacks, Cheetos, potato chips, and pretzels were set on top. Jessie had lugged Megan's boom box all the way downstairs, and Megan was doing the DJ thing with her CD collection. It looked like a party had somehow sprung up right in the middle of the hot concrete sidewalk. To anyone passing by, the lemonade stand shouted out, Come over here! This is where the fun is! As soon as the music had come on, customers had started drifting over. One of the moms across the street set up a sprinkler in her front yard. And soon all the kids in the neighborhood were running through the sprinkler and grabbing handfuls of Cheetos. Two women walking their dog stopped for a nibble and ended up staying an hour. And three or four of the neighborhood mothers set up lawn chairs nearby and talked and ate pretzels while their kids ran through the water. But Jesse noticed a funny thing. Even though there was an endless buzz of activity around the stand and the chips were flying out of the bowls faster than Megan could restock them, they weren't selling much lemonade. Hey, Jordan, said Jesse as a four-year-old boy ran by in a bathing suit. Don't you want a cup of lemonade? Jordan dive-bombed the pretzel bowl and came up with a fistful. I had too much already. Four glasses! And off he ran. Four glasses, said Jesse to Megan. He didn't buy any. Mrs. Doran, don't you want a cup of lemonade? What do you think's happening? At Evan's stand, and they're just coming there for the for the snacks. Do they have to pay for the snacks? I don't remember. It's that added value. Mm. Sorry, Jesse. I have to pass, said Mrs. Doran. I had two already, and I'm trying to cut down on sugary drinks. Where's everybody drinking so much lemonade, wondered Jessie. She looked down the road. Oh, wait a minute. Megan, hold down the fort, said Jessie. I'll be right back. Sure thing, said Megan, dancing to the music. This lemonade stand was the greatest idea. It's like a birthday for the whole neighborhood. Jessie headed down the road. As she rounded the bend, she prepared for the worst. Evan's lemonade stand crowded with customers, but there was nothing, absolutely nothing. The corner was deserted. She crossed the street and went into the garage. There was the cooler dirty, uh, and, dirty and empty. And there were the stacked plastic chairs, four of them this time. And there was, wait a minute, those were new signs. Jesse pulled out three large pieces of foam core. On the back of each one, was part of the penguin project Evan had done last year in third grade. On the front were big letters. Slow down, cheapest lemonade in town ahead. Yesterday's prices, today's lemonade. You won't believe your eyes. Ice cold lemonade, just 10 cents a cup. How much, uh, how much was yesterday? How much were they charging before? 50 cents. So how many cups of lemonade could you get today to equal one yesterday? 
Five cups. Oh my god. Ten cents. Let's keep going and see if it pays off for Evan. Jesse couldn't believe her eyes. Ten cents a cup. That was crazy. Even if they sold all 96 cups, they'd only make $9.60. And split four ways, that was just $2.40 for each boy. Evan was never going to earn $100 with that kind of profit. Jesse went down into the basement. Evan and Paul were playing air hockey. Washoo! The puck flew into Evan's goal, and Paul threw his arms into the air in a victory V. Oh, snap, said Evan. You're winning. Winning? Winning? Are you kidding me? said Paul. Then he dropped his voice to a gravelly growl and said, I don't play to win. I play to pulverize. <laughs> Just like that muscle guy actor in Agent Down, the movie that all the boys were talking about. Paul was even flexing his muscles like the actor, except that Paul didn't have any muscles, at least none that Jesse could see. When Paul saw Jesse, he dropped his arms. Hey, he said. Paul was Jesse's favorite of Evan's friends. He always joked around with her, but in a nice way. And he never minded when Evan invited her to come along with them. Hey, said Jesse, what's up? Evan turned off the air hockey table. Nothing, he said. We were just going out. Paul dropped his hockey paddle onto the table and followed Evan into the garage. Jesse trailed behind. Where are you going? She asked. Down to the tracks, said Paul as he strapped on his bike helmet. We put pennies there this morning, so we're going to go get them now. Squash, you know. Yo, shouted Evan. My bee, muttered Paul. So see ya, he said to Jesse. Jesse hated this feeling of being shut out, like she wasn't wanted. Evan had never made her feel that way before, and even when sometimes he did want to just be with his friends, he'd always say things like, Jess, we're going to go shoot hoops, just the two of us, but when we get back, we'll play spud with you, so that she knew he still liked her, even when she wasn't invited along. But this, this was like he hated her. Like he never wanted to play with her again. And Paul was going right along with it. Jessie scowled. So you really cleaned up today at the lemonade stand, huh? She said. Yep, we sold out, said Evan. So what did you make? Like three dollars, she asked. Actually, we made a ton. What was it, Paul? Forty-five bucks, said Paul. Jessie's mouth went slack. Forty-five dollars? There's no way, she said. Not at 10 cents a cup. Oh, just the little kids paid that, said Evan. The grown-ups all gave us way more. That's too cheap, they said. It's such a hot day and you're working so hard. Here, take a dollar. Keep the change. It was crazy. Unreal, said Paul. They kept pushing all this money at us because they thought it was so sweet we were selling lemonade for a dime. We made a killing. Great idea number five. Jessie remembered it immediately. It's called Goodwill, she said slowly to the picture of the exact page from her mother's booklet with the definition on it. Goodwill, an intangible but recognized asset that results from making slash selling good products, having good relationships with your customers and suppliers, and being well regarded in the community. It's when you do something nice in business, but it ends up paying you back with money, she sighed. Why hadn't she thought of that? She, she would be sure to tear out that definition and put it in her lockbox when she got back to the lemonade stand. Well, whatever, we cleaned up, said Evan. Even so, said Jesse, trying to find some way to prove that Evan had not had a good day selling lemonade. You had four people working the stand. So if you split $45 four ways, that's only eleven twenty-five each, which is still way more than I'm going to make today, she thought, since the whole neighborhood had already filled up on the cheap lemonade. We're not splitting, said Evan. The guy said I could keep it all. Right, said Paul, all for a good cause. That's not fair, said Jesse. Sure it is, said Evan as he got on his bike and pushed off. In case you didn't know, 
That's what it's like to have friends, uh, Evan crossed the street. Ouch, said Paul. TTFN, Jess. He followed Evan. Jesse was left standing alone in the driveway. TTFN. You guys don't know what TTFN is? I know. This one is similar. Not talk. Have you guys not seen Winnie the Pooh? No. Yeah. Tigger, Tigger always says this. Ta-ta for now. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Oh, okay. So, oh, was that shocking or what? Yeah. Oh. So how many of you, does any of your predictions change now? Do you think Evan's going to win now? Or are you guys... No. No. Raise your hand if you think Evan's going to win now. You're changing your mind. Maybe Evan's a better business person than we thought. Uh, raise your hand if you think Jesse's going to come back from it. All right. All right, fourth grade friends. That was a shocking chapter. So who... Who was the underseller? Evan. Evan. Evan sold his for a lot cheaper. That is so cheap. Has anybody ever done a lemonade stand? Just raise your hand. Has anyone ever done one? Have you ever had people give you goodwill like that? Where they're like, have some extra money. Like, here, I don't want to help you. It's called tips. That's incredible. Oh, Ryan's got an idea that could make Jesse's a little better. What was it, Ryan, to make it a little better? Yeah, so buy a cup and then you get the snacks. Not just come on up and have free snacks whenever you want. Huh? <laughs> I want to get free Why? Why might the chips and snacks pretzels not be a good idea? Other than people just come up and grab them. Let's say we go with Ryan's idea. Ryan's idea, and you buy a cup and you get a cup. Why is that still maybe not the best idea for Jesse? Why might that not be a good idea? Micah? Doing the chips. Well, remember, who's buying all the stuff? Who's buying all the stuff for Jesse? Oh. Jesse and Megan, where do they get the money from? What they sold, what they earned yesterday. So if they had to buy chips too. What's going to happen to their profits? Yeah. It's going to start to sink even lower. Yeah, but, then they're just I know it's kind of like a it's kind of like a good and a bad thing, isn't it? Uh, Rosie? I'm going to eat pretzels at home. That's a good sign. Take notes from Evan. Sell your lemonade for 10 cents a cup. What do you think Jesse's going to try and do then? Do you think Jesse's going to undersell Evan even? All right. Ba -ba -da -ba -bum. Fourth grade friends. What I'm actually going to have you do is this side, since there's only five questions. One and two are normal. Three is a, a pretty straight up answer. Four, we just, I just told you the answer. Five is our normal one. Do they relate? Then I would like you to do this side for homework too, your Venn diagram. Let's read through what you have to do. Can I please have Lily? Can you read the directions for the Venn diagram? Yes. Um, um, the 
So think through like this chapter strategies. Was anything similar? How were they different? This chapter when they sold lemonade today. How did Evan's strategy affect Jesse's strategy? Okay. This side and this side are your homework. So both parts of chapter six, front and back. Questions you have for me on either side. Claire? Uh, I'm, I'm okay, hold on for five seconds. Any questions on your homework, fourth grade friends? Just so we are clear and it's on video, you need to do both sides. Crystal? Yeah. All right, that's all we've got for reading today.